Um, hello, my name is Clive Scott, and this is part number 20 of a course on Java. And um, it was going to be about nested classes, but um, I started doing that and realised that it was going to come in at something like about four hours. So I split it up, and this is the first bit on um, static member classes. These things, by the way, are also also known as top-level nested classes. And if English is not your native language, AKA is um, an abbreviation for also known as. Uh, these are the uh, uh, next set of courses I've got lined up already. Um, uh, this is this one, uh, number 20, which is static member classes. Uh, then we do non-static member classes, then local, and then finally anonymous classes. All right, we're starting with um, static member classes because um, they're probably the easiest to understand. Okay, now to begin with, the only sort of class we've seen so far has been a what's called a top-level class, or, or interface for that matter, um, and that's the only thing we've seen so far. Now, um, a nested class or interface is one that's declared inside of another class or interface. And there are several different types of nested class or interface. And um, uh, the first thing we're going to look at is what's called a static member class. Now, um, a static member class or interface, for that matter, is a static class or interface declared as a member of a top level class or interface or as a static member of another static member class or interface. <laughs> if you can follow that. Now, um, uh, member interfaces, by the way, are implicitly static, so you don't have to mark them as static. And a member class of an interface is implicitly static, so you don't have to mark that as static. Okay? So, if that's a bit confusing, here's some examples that make it all clear. Right, what we've got here is um, an ordinary top-level class A1, and within it is a static member class B1. It's just declared, starts there. And there and there it is, that's a static member class. And inside of that you have yet another thing, this is um, um, a, an, an interface, a static member interface. That's the only sort of interface you can have by the way. And um, you see you don't have to actually declare that as static because it's implicitly static. You can put it in if you want to but you don't have to. And uh, inside that is yet another static member class, C1. Okay, so inside a big one that is so um, we've got we've got quite a tree here and you can see you can put static uh, member classes inside of other static member classes that's fine you don't see that very often by the way but you can do it right here's uh, another example but this time it's done with an interface uh, you can if you put a class like that into an interface it's implicitly static and so it counts as a static member class. You don't have to put the word static in front again. Uh, you can have an interface inside of an interface and um, inside of that you can say put a uh, a class and uh, this this time because it's inside of an interface you it's implicitly static so you don't need to put static in front. You can if you want to, that doesn't make any difference. Now, here's a few things which are something which is uh, not a static member class, this thing here. In fact, that's something else. That's called a non-static member class um, because it is not marked as being static. And again, it's nested inside of something else. Um, this interface I3 here, that's quite okay. That's a, a static member interface. You can see you can either put it in or not. It's the word static if you want to. Right, now this down here though is a compiler error because um, you can't have um, static in that position because this is not a this is not a static member class B4 right is not a static member class and um, you can only go nesting static classes inside of other static classes or interfaces so you can't put it in there that, that in fact would be a compiler error um, nesting uh, classes or interfaces inside of other interfaces is not something that um, you see very often and um, in the same way um, nesting one inter interface inside of another is uh, also a bit odd um, but you do see it very occasionally and um, 
um, also nesting classes or interfaces inside of other classes to any sort of depth is pretty rare as well uh, but they do very occasionally occur um, anyway um, uh, all this uh, nesting in fact is um, is quite important and um, is absolutely vital for uh, things like um, Swing which is the um, uh, Java uh, graphical user interface that is the reason they were put in here basically that's the whole reason for nested classes now um, um, let's have a look then to, um, to instantiate a static member class which I'll abbreviate as SMC what you do is you use its full name basically and um, you don't have to have any instance of the enclosing class it's not required at all and um, therefore the um, this static member class can only directly access the static members of the enclosing class now um, you can also put um, um, access modifiers in front of the static member class um, you can have any of them you, so you could declare it as um, static private or whatever and um, uh, all modifiers uh, accessibility modifiers are available and um, and uh, just like methods um, <coughs> um, the uh, anything in the static member class itself can um, can access um, private members of the enclosing class and also the other way around the enclosing class can access private members of the um, static uh, member class and um, uh, what happens uh, when you do the compilation is that um, the whole thing gets sort of flattened out and um, it gets unpacked and um, where there would be um, um, dots you get um, dollars replaced uh, I suppose I better show this um, so here's, here's look if you take a look at this example here um, uh, supposing you want to declare that test um, um, implements um, that interface there. So what you do is you put test implements um, top dot n2 dot i just like that and top dot n2 dot i is the full name of that interface and um, that's about it. Now obviously if you're inside the class you don't need to use the full name so here for instance um, we've got n2 implements j which is that interface there we could put um, top dot j or just j it's the same thing inside the class uh, likewise if you want to create um, an instance of something can declare the type there it's an instance of n1 there you just put top dot j dot n1 that's the type uh, that's the variable a uh, just equal to new top dot j1 dot n top dot j dot n1 it's all pretty straightforward really um, now the compiler output so obviously this is the full name of the various bits you can obviously work out what they are and what the compiler does is it replaces the dot with a dollar sign like that so the output classes are top dot class for the output class top dollar j for that one top dollar j dollar n1 for that one and um, and so on. It's all straightforward in test.class for this external one there. Now that's uh, fairly straightforward. 